Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here, and I hope you're all doing well. The topic on today's video is showing you how to stake your Polkadot on your Ledger hardware wallet. So the functionality has only been released a few days ago. I have just completed the process on my Ledger Nano X, and in this video, I'm going to take you step-by-step step through how to do it on a Ledger device. So I have another one. If you've seen my previous videos where I've used the Ledger device, you will see the other camera on my screen here showing my Ledger Nano S. So you will be able to see what's going on on that and on my screen. Now the process of doing this compared to the normal staking is slightly different. There is a few little differences in the process and actually the idea of using a stash account and a controller account, if you're not familiar with them, I'll take you through that in the video. It is actually a very good feature when it comes to your hardware device. It means that you use your hardware device when setting this all up and then you can put it away again wherever you keep it on an ongoing basis and use another wallet to control what happens with your stake. So jumping straight in here, first you have to have the Polkadot app on your device. So you can see I already have that on the ledger here. What you want to do is install the Polkadot app. And again, if you remove apps on the devices, it is no problem. This does not impact the keys. The keys always remain on the device. So if you remove an app and need to access them coins later, you can always put the app back on and it's the exact same addresses and keys that you previously used with that device. So let's scroll, scroll down to the end. I'm going to show you this part here, how you enable the Polkadot site to actually access the ledger. So I'll show you that rather than the screenshots. And then down here are the steps. So this is how to stake. There's another article here on how to know what validators to choose. So there are some best practices. I will jump through that in the video as well. There will be timestamps for this video too. So you can check them out down below. So if there's certain parts you want to skip to, then you can do that as well. This is the site here, Polkadot. Uh, what is it? Polkadot.js.org. This is where I have done my staking. I know there will be other ones in the future, but for now, this is the one that I am using. And what you need as well is the Polkadot extension. So I've already added this, as you can see here, and you can see it up in the top right. You can see I have the link here. But to, first of all, install that. The reason that I've done that as well as my Ledger device. So if you want to do it all on the Ledger, that's fine. You don't need the extra app but they do recommend using two accounts, one for your stash and one for your controller. They don't stop you using the same account as both, but for both security and I would say handiness when you're using a ledger, it is good to use the web wallet as well. So how this works is you come into accounts and you can see it automatically picks up the one that I've set up using the extension here but it doesn't pick up my ledger first. So I do have the query ledger button here. You mightn't have that when you come on first. You need to go into settings and then this one here, manage hardware connections. So this by default is on do not attach ledger devices, but I've put it to attach. So that means that when I come into accounts then, I have the query ledger button here. So I click on this and Actually, it has found it because I already done this before the video to make sure it all worked. But what you will get when you click query is you will get a pop up like this here and it should probably say unknown device or something like that. And you click on it and then click connect and then it brings up the ledger in here. So you can see for this video, I have and it tells you the type then. So this one is my ledger and this is injected. I've just called this a video controller and that was created up here. So once I had the app up here, I just went to add a new account. So create a new account. They have two options. They have root, derive it from a previous account or create a new one. I personally always create a new one from a seed as then you have separate seed phrases and the accounts aren't linked to each other. So you just go through the process there, create it, copy out your um, seed phrase. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna say I've done it. And then you give your wallet a name. So I'm going to call it dummy because it doesn't matter. Give it a password. And that's how you create your account up here. So again, I will delete that one later. I'm not going to use it as I already have the two here that I need. So to actually stake then, what you need to do is go into network staking. Then 
the first part that you need to do for the ledger is come into account actions. And up on top here, you have nominator, validator, and stash. For the ledger, what you need to do first is stash. And then the stash account is going to be my ledger and my controller account is going to be my video controller. So the, the stash is basically like your cold wallet and the controller then is the one that can decide what to do with the funds that are on the stash account. So the stash account is never at risk. The controller account, you're basically given the telling the network that that controller account has permission to vote on your behalf or to control where them funds are, where the voting power goes to. So the controller account is the extension one and the ledger is the stash. So there I'm going to bond, I'm going to just bond three of them. So that leaves two free and you never bond your full amount. You always need to keep at least one dot free for the fees. And the same with the controller account, I only put two into it just so that is able to pay any fees. So if I'm doing anything like changing my nominations or anything like that, I can use the controller account and the fees are paid out of it rather than the stash account. So bond, I'm doing three. It's locked on chain for 28 days then. And the payment destination, this is where you can decide where the rewards are paid to. So you could do it your controller account. So then all fees come out of that as well. Or what I am just going to do is leave it as the default to increase the amount at the stake. So I'm putting it to my stash account. So I go bond. Then it comes up and just tells me what the fee is going to be. You can include a tip for the block author if you want. Sometimes if the network is very congested, uh, you can include a tip and it will push your transaction up higher. But at the minute, the Polkadot network is running fine. So we're going to sign and submit sign and submit here and now what i'm going to get is on the ledger you can see it's coming up with staking bond so i go across it gives me the controller address and then it gives me the value it gives me the payee staked the chain is polka dot a tip i didn't include a tip in this one but if the network is fairly busy you can do it, it tells me the block there and then i approve and that's all I need to do on the ledger. You can see up in the top right now, the staking has started and then it has gone into the network. So you can see now I have my stash in here and I now have a new one up here. I can nominate where I want these to go. What I'm gonna do first though is just show you the targets. So this is where you can pick the validators that you want to nominate. So. A few tips on this. There is an article here that has some good tips on what validators to choose. I'm not going to recommend any here. It's something that I may set up my own validator node in the future. I have looked into it and it does look very interesting. I just need to do a little bit more research on, on it to make sure that I can provide an optimum service for people if I do. If I do, I will put the link to it down below, down below this video. But back here anyway, this is what you want to look for. So. Oversubscribed is something you need to pay attention to. So the first, the highest uh, contributing 64 people to a validator are the only ones that are going to get paid in that validator. So if something is oversubscribed, then I would say you need to start looking at some of the other validator nodes. You can assign multiple validators to to your stake. So it is recommended that you assign multiple ones. You can assign up to 16. I uh, slashed then, this is where pools, or not for pools, validators get penalized for doing kind of things on the chain that aren't good. If their network is going down, if they're not performing properly, they get slashed. Basically the rewards are taken uh, or a percentage of the rewards are taken and they are paid into the treasury then instead. So there are things to look for. If a validator has a history of being slashed, then maybe they're not the one for you. You may already know what validator you want to go with. It is good to support validators that are giving you value as well because the validators get rewarded. They can put a commission on it. So they get a small commission on your rewards. So if you are paying the commission, check that it is going to someone that is doing something for the network or either helping you out as well. 
So what you want to do is over here, you can see the profit per year. So it's defaults to a thousand. So we'll leave it at a thousand. You may be putting in 10, you may be putting in 10,000. You can put in your number here. Profit then is basically what you are going to get every era. And an era in Polkadot is 24 hours. So this is the return you could expect. Now, if something happens and your validator is slashed or if your validator isn't included, you might not get paid on that one. But this is the, I would say the guide on it. Over here then, nominators, we'll look at this in a second. Total stake is how much is in it. Own stake then, so this shows how much that validator has on the line. So their own stake is at risk of being slashed if they do not perform. So someone with a lot of their own, their own dot at stake is a good pool as well. There are lots of ways to weigh this up. And as I see my own results and my own payouts, I will be able to give better insights into that as well in what has worked and what's not working. So I'll do ongoing videos, so make sure you subscribe for them. Down on nominators, if we sort this by nominators, so this one here is 185. So unless you are putting in a huge stake into this pool here, you are not going to get anything out because it's only the top 64 that will be paid out. So we would scroll on down here and then we see the ones that are under 64 then. So these are ones that I would personally be looking at going into. So I think I done 10 on my own stake when I was doing it with my Nano X. Actually, I can turn off the ledger screen now because we don't actually need the ledger now. You can see more on the screen then. So the percentage is this one here. And see this one here is 100%. Be careful on something like that. 100% basically means that this pool does not want anyone to stake or to nominate them because they have enough of their own dot in there. And if you actually put some of your dot into it, you're gonna get nothing out. You can see the reward is nothing, that they are charging 100% commission. So whatever is earned, they take. I would say any of these three, 5% fees are all fine. They don't make a huge difference to what you get at the end of the day. And they give something small to the person running the validator because there is a cost in running the server. And to run it properly, there is even more cost to make sure that you are getting the proper service. So I would be looking at something under 64 here. Anything up as far as 10, I wouldn't probably be looking at a commission over 10%, up to 10 is probably okay. I would be on the three, 5%, even 8% are okay in my book anyway. Again, if you look at the stake that is involved, so this person here has half a million dot in this stake pool, so they would really be on the line to run that properly. They are charging a 10%, but this here to me would look like that they have a huge incentive to make sure that that pool runs right. And you can come over here and click this little chart button, and it's going to show you how this has been performing. So in the beginning, you can see there was a bit of turmoil, but if you look at every pool, they're all basically the same. The first few days, these are a bit erratic, but what you want to look at is over time, how it's performing. As you can see, going well, going well, and then this one is now being elected basically every time. So if the validator is not elected, then it doesn't get results either. So this is a deeper topic to get into, and I will do that in a future video. So once you've picked your validators, who you want to validate or who you want to nominate, you come back over here, click on nominate, and then you can see it's picked up my stash, my controller account. So you go through here and you pick the ones that you want. I actually forget what the ones were there. When I was doing it myself, I had two screens open and seeing what ones I wanted to do. So I'm actually gonna just pick at random here and you see when you click them, they come over to the right. I pick three. If you pick one that you don't want, you just click on it and it kicks it back out for you. But we put them in here and because these are only test amounts. It doesn't matter if I don't get anything back out of it, but that's how would, you would do it. But make sure you do your own research yourself and make sure you're happy with who you get involved with. Click nominate, it's telling me the fee that it's going to be. I'm going to sign and continue and you're gonna see a difference this time and open it on the other screen. It's popped up this here and you can see it's video controller and it's actually using the plugin here rather than my ledger. So if I turn back on the ledger camera just to show you, 
The ledger isn't doing anything now. So effectively I can put that ledger away back into a safe storage place because I don't need it. The app here can control it, but my funds still stay with the ledger safely. So on this, I just put in my password, sign the transaction, or put in the right password might help. Sign the transaction. And it's broadcasting now and we should see it coming up here once it's done. So you can see nominating and it's waiting nomination. So you do have to wait, is it two or three years? I will have to check that out. I can't remember just off the top of my head. It doesn't go straight in, you have to wait. And then it goes in after the set amount of years. I will put that below as well. I hope this video has been useful to you guys. If it has, then make sure you subscribe, share the video as well to help some others, give it a like and ask any questions below and I will use them in a follow-up video on this because as you see in this, it is a deep topic to get into and there are lots of different areas that we can look at, which I will be exploring over the next few weeks. So thanks for watching guys, I will talk to you soon.